Before we start talking about reproductive anatomy, it's going to be necessary to, to cover a little bit of cell biology. It's going to be very brief and very watered down or simplified, but that's going to be enough for us to understand two basic concepts within the realm of cell division, one of which is going to be mitosis, which is cell division of somatic cells. The other one is meiosis, which is cell division, which is cell division that ends up producing gametes. So let's take a look at this. So once again, I mentioned mitosis and meiosis. Mitosis is cell division that produces somatic cells. Somatic cells are all cells in the body other than gametes. So I guess we should define gametes first. Gametes are our sex cells, which are egg or sperm. Egg are also known as ova or ovum, which is singular. Meiosis is the process of producing gametes. So it's the process of producing sperm cells or egg cells, otherwise known as ova. In females, meiosis is known, known as oogenesis. In males, meiosis is known as spermatogenesis. The same basic process of producing those male and female gametes, sperm cells are the male gametes, ova are the female gametes. The process is roughly the same. The timing is dramatically different, and we'll touch on that. So going back to mitosis, Mitosis is cell division that produces somatic cells. So these could be keratinocytes, the cells of our skin. It could be hepatocytes, the cells of our liver, the cells of our heart muscle, myocardial cells, neurons, any cells in the body that are not gametes are somatic cells and they are produced via mitosis. So let's take a brief look at both mitosis and meiosis. So we are looking at a somatic cell right here. It doesn't matter what somatic cell in the body it is. As we've discussed in multiple other lectures, some tissues, some cells of some tissues are highly mitotic, meaning they are constantly or regularly dividing, whereas others are minimally mitotic. So I'm not suggesting this process is going to happen as frequently in all cells of the body, some it happens more, some it happens less. But in mitosis, this somatic cell, when it divides, is going to create two identical daughter cells that will look exactly like this. So the two daughter cells here and here are identical to each other, and they are both identical to the parent cell, the initial cell that divided. Now, I am not including any variety that may result due to mutation, due to some unnatural cell division. I'm just drawing down, I'm just trying to elaborate the very basics of mitosis. And that is the parent cell will divide to create two identical daughter cells, identical to each other and identical to the cell that initially split into two. That is mitosis. It's cell division of somatic cells. So one thing I want to say about mitosis is the original cell that starts out is what's known as diploid. That is to say, it has the full complement of 23 pairs of chromosomes, a total of 46 chromosomes. Chromosomes are the structures within the nuclei of cells that house and contain the genetic information, the genes that are the blueprint for making up so much of our body. So the parent cell is diploid, the full complement of 46 chromosomes, and these daughter cells are also diploid. They have 46 chromosomes or 23 pairs. Without getting into the details, there are pairs because one chromosome comes from the mother, one comes from the father. So in mitosis, we start out with a diploid cell. We end up with two daughter cells that are also diploid. Meiosis is a bit different. Now, to be clear, meiosis starts with a germ cell 
that ends up dividing via the process of meiosis, oogenesis in females, spermatogenesis in males, and it ends up producing daughter cells that are haploid. They only have 23 chromosomes. They, they, they do not have the full complement of the 23 pairs of chromosomes. There are 46 total chromosomes. The daughter cell of this is going to only have 23 chromosomes in total. And here we are with meiosis. So meiosis ends up producing theoretically four daughter cells. I'm not concerned about the process. I'm not concerned that meiosis produces four and mitosis produces two. But what I am interested in conveying here is that the daughter cells are haploid. They have 23 chromosomes, whereas the parent cell had 23 pairs of chromosomes. Each of these daughter cells only have 23 chromosomes. These gametes only have 23 chromosomes. And that's significantly important because the gametes, the egg and the sperm cell, produced by two different organisms, the female and, and male respectively, the egg and the sperm are eventually going to unite to form an organism. And that organism needs to have 46 chromosomes. Now, full disclaimer, there are individuals that may have an extra chromosome here or there. They are still fully human, but most individuals have just 46 chromosomes. And that's because the egg cell has 23, the sperm cell has 23, and then when they unite, there are 23 pairs or 46 total chromosomes. So in meiosis, which we are seeing right here, meiosis starts with a diploid cell and ends up with four haploid cells. The other significant part of this is these daughter cells are different from each other and different from the parent cell. So once again, mitosis produces two identical diploid cells. Meiosis produces four unidentical haploid cells. So what is the relevance of all of this to reproductive anatomy, which we are getting into right now? The relevance is the organ or organs that both males and females have, which are the gonads represented right here. The female gonads are known as ovaries, which are housed within the pelvic cavity. The male gonads are the testes, which are housed outside of the body within the scrotum. And that's significantly important, and we'll talk about why in a subsequent video. Once again, the gonads are the ovaries and testes in females and males, respectively. And these ovaries, which are the primary sex organs, are what produce the gametes. So the ovaries in females are producing ova or eggs, which we see in the upper left here. The testes produce the sperm cells, which we see in the upper right. There's a dramatic discrepancy between the size of an egg cell and a sperm cell, and how I've drawn it here really doesn't do it any justice. But I want to be very clear. The gonads only produce one type of gamete, and that depends on the sex of the individual. If an individual is female, which has two X chromosomes, their gonads are known as ovaries, and they're going to produce eggs. Males, the XY chromosome, I'm not worried about the chromosome number, but just to be clear, or chromosome identification, testes produce gametes known as sperm cells. Okay, so now we have a litany of sperm cells and one egg or one ovum right here. To be clear, these are coming from two different individuals and the sperm cells are in a competition to fertilize that egg cell. Once fertilization occurs, we get what's known as a zygote. So a zygote is a fertilized egg and that's what we see right here. That fertilized egg is going to turn into an embryo and then a fetus, a cute little baby, and then develop into an adult. So what I want to touch on right now is the timing of meiosis. Just backing up one a bit, mitosis is constantly happening for some tissues in the body and not so much in other tissues. Tissues that are not highly 
regenerative, such as ligaments, cartilage, mitosis is not happening a lot, or it's le at least it's happening very slowly. And other tissues of the body, for example, the skin, it's constantly happening. So when does meiosis begin? In males, it, per it begins its sexual maturity at puberty, which is roughly, let's say, 15 years old for males. And that age is highly variable. It starts at roughly 15 and it goes on theoretically for that individual's lifetime or at least into very old age. For females, it's a little bit more complex. For females, meiosis begins when they are in embryonic development. And this is going to be very confusing. So here we have on the left, my 85 year old mother. I think this picture was taken one, maybe two years ago. So she was 83 there. She looks pretty much the same right now though she probably has a new pair of shoes because she's always getting new shoes. Anyway, my mother is on the left. Th the egg that produced me, that came from her, first started developing sometime in 1936. To be clear, my mother was born in February of 1937. And just a side note, I was born in January of 1968. But the egg that produced me, the egg that was fertilized by the sperm cell from my father, that egg started being produced when this woman right here was inside the uterus of this woman right here, and that woman is my grandmother. So the egg starts being produced, meiosis commences in utero for females. When a female is born, she's going to have all the eggs she's ever going to have. As a matter of fact, a great many of them are going to die off. But at birth or shortly before birth, the process of meiosis stalls or stops in females. And then when females reach reproductive maturity, let's say somewhere between 12 and 15 years old, meiosis resumes for one of those ova or one of those developing ova. And meiosis resumes once a month for the entirety of the female's reproductive years. So let's say, and I'm just going to make the math easy. Let's say from 15, which is probably on the later end of the spectrum, from 15 to 50. 50, let's say, is when menopause commences. 15 to 50 is, if my math is correct, 35 years. And meiosis is going to resume for one of those developing eggs once a month. So every month, one of those eggs theoretically completes meiosis. That's what's known as the ovarian cycle, which happens, which is a rough, roughly 28-day cycle that allows one of those developing eggs to finish meiosis. So to be clear, the egg that produced me I was born in 68. The egg that produced me first started meiosis sometime in 1936, and it completed meiosis in 1967. I say 67 because I was born in January of 68, so it completed it nine months before that. Okay, that's it for cell division, mitosis, and meiosis.